Hello to my sumo friends. This is going to be a very basic um, kind of beginner's tutorial, um, just how to get started with the tools of sumo and, and doing this little challenge that I've set up for you. I, I tend to forget that I'm a little bit more advanced just because I've been working with um, Photoshop for the last year, so I have a little bit um, more knowledge of how to move stuff around and stuff, but we're going to do this from the beginning. So first we want to take this picture, edit in sumo, if the layers load, Okay, and here's the picture that you're looking at, and some of you are having a hard time figuring out where the other layers were. Well, that's because they are hidden behind it. If I turn this layer off, which is this little dot right here, if I turn that off, see, turn it back on, turn it off. Now these two layers are hidden behind it, are turned off. So if I turn that on, see how you see a very basic white flame there, it's hard to see because it's almost clear. And if I turn this layer on, there's the smoke bubble behind it. So the way we kind of view those a little bit more clearly is to take this top layer here, which is now covering them up, and move this this arrow to move it down. And now it's still kind of all boggled up, so we come over here, select that layer, adjustments, hue and saturation, and let's turn our brightness all the way down. Okay, so now we have a black background with our, our smoke bubble and our flame. Well, let's just work with the flame for now, so we're going to turn the smoke bubble off. Okay, so here's our flame. Some of you are having a hard time with moving. This is move tool right here, this arrow. Once you select, make sure you have the flame selected, choose the move tool, and we can move that flame around wherever we want, or however we want. If we take our right mouse button and click, right there it says free transform, and that's only after we've clicked the move tool and the layer, free transform, we get a little box here. What this box allows us to do is adjust the shape, kind of up, down, and horizontally. Now let's say we wanted to have a little bit more play with it. If we select this warp transform right here, we've got kind of this sort of, oh, we can really kind of bend it around. And up here you see these little boxes. This sort of gives us more points to, to play with. I tend to like it sort of simple, so I choose the 3x3 three three grid resolution. And what this does, it gives a little, even more play, kind of, kind of warp it, um, do whatever we want. So hopefully you're doing this along with me so you'll kind of get a feel for it. So here we go, we're kind of just sort of altering the flame any way that we want. Let's say we like that. Then let's go ahead and move tool and let's go back. Move tool. And you'll find that Sumo messes up sometimes because it's made of flash and flash isn't very stable. Um, let's go ahead and free transform again and put it on the regular first one there. Let's sort of turn it so we think that it looks more like a flame here. Okay. And now some of you were concerned about that you couldn't find how to select pixels. Well, if we come over to this layer again, where my mouse button is, and right-click here, that's the right button of your mouse, see how it opens up a menu, come down here to select pixels, and select that. And see how it turns this blue? What that's doing is just selecting the flame itself and nothing else. Now say we wanted to run a gradient over that. This is the gradient tool right here. And if you run your mouse over any of these, it will tell you what it is. But select the gradient tool. And here appear are your gradients, different shapes and whatever, but for now we're just going to use the basic one. And let's go ahead and use this first gradient. If you open that up though, you can see you can use all the gradients. There's more drop down menus here and more things that we can do with the gradient. But let's go ahead and in the other video I showed you that the normal is just too heavy. So let's go ahead and change this to overlay. Now just take our, our mouse button in this here we left click and pull it from the top down here and then let go. See so yeah, how it doesn't look like nothing or anything has really changed. Let's select, deselect. Now, see how we've got a little bit of a flame color going on there? It's a little bit rosy, um, yeah, a little bit orange. We can go ahead and go adjustments, hue and saturation. We can bump up that, that coloration if we want to, or we can even pull it down. But let's go ahead and bump it up a bit. It's sort of an unnatural flame because of that pink color, but if we wanted to, we could sort of darken it. And another thing we can do is let's go back, adjustments, hue and saturation. See this colorize button? If we colorize this, it's going to always start with this kind of tealy blue color. If we drag it all the way down to almost the very end where it starts to look like a flame color, and then bump that color up, that really gives us that intense flame color. But let's pretend we're not going to use that for now. We're just going to use the sort of pink and the orange yellow that we used before. And now just for fun, let's go ahead and duplicate that layer. Right click on the layer with the right mouse button and choose duplicate layer. And see how that just got brighter? It's because it made two of them. So if we take the top one 
and move it. See how we've got two flames there? They're just alike. Let's go ahead and do free transform. And let's just pull it so it's sort of turned the other way. Now it's like an exact duplicate but opposite. So we've sort of made, like I did in that that green or the moon tulip video, we've sort of made that little shape there. But we can also, if you put your mouse button around the, uh, the corner, you sort of get that turn thing there. We can also turn it, turn it over, move it around. So we've got all sorts of freedom there. So let's just sort of get it how we like it. And hopefully you're doing something similar to this. Um, you can do whatever you want, but this will sort of give you an idea. Okay, now let's merge that layer down. Right click on the top layer, merge layer down. And what that, oops, again, Sumo screws up, so go back. Right click, merge layer down. And now this is one layer, so if I go to move them, they move together. We transform, I'm going to straighten it out a little bit. And let's just pretend we kind of like this flame. Uh, we'll bend it a little bit here, just so it doesn't look so perfectly even. And I don't know that I'm liking this, but oh well. It's all just for demonstration. What am I doing? Okay, so let's pretend we like that. Okay, now it looks like basic flame, say for a gas lamp. Ooh, well look, if we take our smoke bubble and turn that on, because it's on, or below the flame, see how it's looking now like the flame is inside the smoke bubble? Okay, so let's take our smoke bubble layer and play with it. If we've selected the layer, and here we have these blend modes. If we go to darken, it goes away. If we go to linear burn, it goes away. Lighten, it's going to look about the same. If we kind of play with these and kind of get it to look a little bit more clear, just keep trying until you get something that looks good. Ooh, now look, see how hard light sort of gives it that sort of almost like steaminess, so it looks like it's sort of steaming in places and clear in others. Let's go ahead and keep that. Now let's go to our background layer, adjustment, or I'm sorry, filters, texture, bump map. And what bump map does it basically adds a light in the center. So see how we've sort of um, put a little light in behind it so it looks like it's glowing a bit. Let's just push OK. And we're still selecting our background layer here. Adjustments, hue and saturation, colorize. Now we've got green, or we can pull it down to here so it looks a little bit more golden like that flame is lighting the wall behind it. We can pull up the saturation a bit, eh, just so it looks sort of natural, I guess, and keep it like that. And if we want to take our smoke bubble, which is now a little bit more cloudy than it was, and take the um, opacity down just a bit, just so it looks like it's a little bit more clear. And there you go. We have basically a lantern with a flame in it. And our flame looks a little big there, so we go back to our flame. Move tool, free transform. Turn it back to the first one, which is just a basic size thing. Oh, great. There goes Sumo screwing up again. <laughs> Sumo's always screwing up. I don't know. It might be the computer, too. I've had my computer on for quite some time, so... Uh, let's put that back about there. And see how it's kind of disappearing a bit? Let's go ahead and duplicate that layer. So it just looks a little bit heavier. And there you have it. A basic flame in a smoke bubble or glass ball. Um, there's many other things you can do, but this was just to get you started with your layers and and moving them around. So I mean, if we wanted to, we could move the smoke bubble on top, see how it, now the flame's a little bit cloudier. Or we can turn off this layer and look, we can't really see any smoke bubble anymore except for the shadows. So what you need to do is really just play with these layers and then play with your tools. I'll never be afraid to right click on anything to see what opens up. There's lots of things we didn't touch on here, so um, you might want to play with these in the future, but I hope that gets you started. And uh, you might just play along with this video and, and just kind of follow the steps that I did and see what you come up with. Anyway, thanks a lot, guys. Bye.